This episode of Reasonably Spontaneous Conversation is brought to you in part by Clay Boykin Life and Business Coaching, because we all get stuck at times. For more information, visit clayboykin.com. By Janelle Bean, for fun and engaging children's books with cute and colorful characters. For more information, visit janellebean.com. Hello world, it's me, Dennis, and I get to spend some more time with my friend, Doug Fern. Hi, Doug. Hi, Dennis. Great to be back with you again. Well, here we are at the end of March, and you just uh, did a show on your podcast uh, with uh, one of your dear friends, uh, Dave Hill. Uh, I want to I want to tell you, you know, I I'm my heart to you for your loss for this friendship that you had with him and and to be able to do a tribute like that uh what was that like to be able to sit and to to connect with that about someone who was so iconic in the uh in the world of uh of recording that made such a difference to everyone and yet you were able to sit down and to and to do this well um we should probably explain that Dave Hill was a designer of professional recording equipment like I am. He was a recording studio owner and was recording music all his life like I do. So we had a lot in common. And when I learned of his passing, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a struggle because it took me a little while to sort of process that and get past that initial Point, but I I knew that it was important that I talk about that in a way that you know would be heard by our community, the community of people that are in this music recording business. Right. And from there, and I struggle with that for like a week trying to figure out what do I what am I going to say, you know? And I decided that the best approach was to just tell stories about the time that I had spent with him and to some extent explain why he was one of the few people in the world that we could sit down and talk about what we do because it's a, it's a <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny community of people, probably, probably not more than a couple dozen people in the world that do what we do. and And I know almost all of them. But Dave was always the guy that, uh, that that I had the best rapport with, and we collaborated on some projects together. And it, he was just a great guy, a great resource for me, and, of course, a great friend. So uh, the response I've gotten from that podcast has been, you know, overwhelming. Uh, I was really... I expected it would reach a lot of people, but it surprised me just to the number of people that have listened to that and the number of people that have written to me personally, uh, basically thanking me. And and everybody, you know, says something about, sorry for the loss of your friend, which, you know, obviously I appreciate, but that that isn't the story. The story is this great guy who's no longer here, who, uh, you know, invented so many wonderful, wonderful products, and there will be no more. I mean, the company will continue, and they will continue to put out the things he designed, but there won't be anything more coming from that amazing mind of his. What an astonishing, it's an astonishing experience. And But when I think it might be a tiny community, but when, when, as you've done over your podcasts, which we'll talk about later, uh, is that this time when music was actually began to be recorded and it began to get into the areas of higher fidelity from getting into uh, clarity, this has been a, a very short amount of time. And you, there may be a small community, but the but that small community has impacted 
the 10,000 th songs that get dropped on Spotify a day. It had impacted the higher end of what, I mean, it has really influenced and impacted such an extraordinary amount of in the community. And you were not only there when it happened, but your equipment and the work that you've done is actually part of inf uh, of the inf uh, of the influence of that of that entire industry. Well, yes, thank you for saying that. Uh, I accept that compliment, but I have to say that you know there were an awful lot of people in the history of this business that you know established the technology, the the standards, the rules, all those things that made what I do possible. You, you know, I mean, it's the old saying that you stand on the shoulders of giants, and that's the way I feel. And I had the privilege of meeting and getting to know some of those people that were, you know, a huge influence on our industry. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I was able to do that. But to to sit down, I'm, I'm interested in that that the, your own growth as a creator, because as you began to build, and you've talked about this on your podcast as you as you've done that, but to to make a decision, because you have to make a decision. You're listening to whatever it is, and you're saying this isn't enough, and I think I can do better. But in order to do that, you've got to go back to some basic electronics, some basic, okay, I got to figure out, okay, here's a tube, here's, this goes to a capacitor, or this, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, I'm just, just saying words. But you had to do that and to go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and design, where did that come from to say, okay, I can do this? Because you did the same thing when you started the podcast. You hadn't done a podcast before, but you started the basic, even on the even on the the one I listened to recently on on making a podcast. You went through the entire creative process. Okay, well, I got to figure this out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to build it on one step at a time. I'm interested in that and uh, and how you got to to the point of okay, I can do this. I can go ahead and working through that one step at a time. Well, um, you know, you have to go back a long way in my history because as a kid, probably starting when I was six or seven, I was really interested in science, probably even before that. But I mean, I really, when I got, when I knew how to read and could go to the library and get up books and, and actually learn useful stuff, um, I just started building things. So it was sort of a, uh, just a way of life for me. And, you know, I'm not great at it. I don't have a degree in, in electronics, <laughs> electrical engineering or anything. I'm entirely self-taught. But more to the point, you know, that's just the mechanics of figuring out how to do what you want. The key thing is to me, is first of all, knowing what music really sounds like, and then being able to provide the tools to the recording community that you know reflect the way I hear, and hopefully that will appeal to the other people out there doing recording. And you know, I'm pleased that it's turned out that way that the my products are you know very well accepted in the in the in the world, uh, which, you know, wasn't necessarily my goal because every product I made, and you see a bunch of them here in the background, all that red stuff, um, was filling a need that I had that I could not find commercially available. And throughout my recording career, I've always built things to, to you know, fulfill a need that I needed to, a problem I needed to solve in the studio. But it wasn't until, well, it's just about 30 years ago now that I decided to see if I could make a product that would actually, uh, you know, appeal to others. How cool. So, so let's fast forward now to, to now. Do you have 
Do you have ideas for equipment and things that are still doing? What does what is your life? You just turned 20, uh, 75. Congratulations. I am about to turn 75. So I'm in that same cohort. Now I'm looking at my own mortality and I'm looking at all the, the place where I am in that creative space. Uh, some people, some inventors and some creative artists have this big burst at the beginning and then taper off and then re redo their 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 work. I'm much more of a, a of a lifelong learner and grower. What do you what do you see right now that you're interested in? What are the what are the things that 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 make you curious here at 75 and that are the vistas you're looking at? Well, <clears throat> there's lots of, lots of answers to that. Uh, you know, I was asked recently in an interview what I wanted my legacy to be, <laughs> you know, which, which caught me off guard because I had, I had never specifically thought about that. I mean, it occurred to me that I actually built some tangible products that will probably continue to do their job for a long, long time. I mean, I designed them to to last a long time, um, but uh, so, so that's kind of nice to have a piece of equipment with your name on it that's going to be here long after I'm gone. Um, but... Uh, you know, I have a I have a really strong need for novelty. I got to constantly be doing something new, learning something new. And as far as the product line is concerned, yeah, I've got a lot of ideas. I seem to have a a, a bit of a problem with motivation to to get those designs completed. And the reason is that I've been doing this for what. 60 some years and the actual construction of the equipment, which you need to do for a prototype, you know, just to see if, if it works, um, doesn't have much appeal to me anymore. So I need to get some, and fortunately there, there are interns that will come in here and do that. Um, but I find often that's more trouble than it is for me to do it myself. Uh, but, um, you know, I do have ideas for new products. I've kind of fulfilled most of the things that I need for the kind of recording I do. And I've always resisted pressure from people saying, you know what I need? This is what you should design. And I, I always say, well, that's a good idea. But then when I sit down and start to think about it, I, say, I would never use that. You know, it just doesn't my style. And that's probably not a real wise business decision, but it's important to me that every product I put out is something I would use in preference to anything else available. Mm -hmm. And if a product doesn't meet that criteria, then I don't want to put it out. You know, and it's gotta it's gotta move the state of the art forward in some way. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? So you know that's where I stand on that end of the of the creative endeavors. All right, you know, as, I, I want to ask about the recording end. If you're not going mm -hmm. into that, were you going into that there, or where were you going with that? Well, next I was going to talk about the writing because I Please. I script my podcasts, and people seem to respond to the way I explain things. I think I've always been pretty good at explaining things, and. Uh, you know, I don't want to waste my time reading bad stuff, and I don't want to waste my time reading things that are not accurate, you know. So I strive really hard to make sure that the stuff is relevant and at least to some extent entertaining. I mean, I haven't been in the entertainment business for 50-some years without some of that rubbing off on me. Is that you have to, um, you have to provide some degree of entertainment, no matter what you're doing. I think that that's that's an important part of a lot of things that we do. So that's another thing that I want to 
pursue more and maybe write some stuff that isn't for the podcast, but for some sort of other application, you know, a blog, a book. I don't know. Um, time is my biggest problem, of course. Well, of course. It is. <laughs> and and also, you know, I've come back full circle to my love of recording and helping artists make good recordings. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this in regard to Corey Lynn Green, who you've had on your show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's somebody I've worked with now for a few years. And, you know, I just think she has all the potential in the world. And, uh, and I really enjoy working with her. So uh, I want to do that. And if I find other people that, you know, are still in that same sort of category, uh, I'd, I'd like to do that as well. And so that thing that got me started in this, in, you know, in, in my love of making recordings, uh, that that has really never diminished. No. It's just in different parts of my life, it beca becomes larger, smaller part. Doug, when you're in, when you're in a session, mm -hmm. can you talk about the psychology of how to, to bring out the best within, because it, it must be so delicate. I mean, I, I, I know I, I do this in television where we, where we have, you know, an opportunity to be able to bring, to be able to work with actors or to work with this. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in your place and the place where you're, you're bringing this with, the, your years of experience and the difference about the psychology of that recording session and how bringing out the best and and that happens with all the disparate personalities and egos and uh, opportunities that there are within that time. Well, Dennis, I'm fortunate at this point in my career that that I don't have to record with people I don't want to work with. You know, when I had a commercial studio and that was my business. I had to work with whoever came in the door, uh, you know, and I had a staff of other engineers. I didn't have to do it all. So I sort of reserved the ones I really wanted to do for myself, but that wasn't always all that terrific. And so now I'm at a point where I can choose who I want to work with. So when you have the right people in the room, it's pretty effortless in that regard because you bring the right people together. I mean, that's that's a bit of an art a, and a bit of luck, but you bring the right people together to make music. You know, people I've worked with for a long time, so I know their skill level and I know their sensitivity. I know their musical preferences. I know how they get along with other people and bring them in here. And it's just fun. We just have a great deal of fun, even though it's very intense. You know, it's it's hard to, to get a perfect recording, you know, a perfect performance from everybody. And, uh, uh, and, and usually we don't have time to do it over and over and over again. So we have to accept some degree of imperfection. But, uh, you know, I want to capture the, the proper feel for that particular song for that artist to make sure that it serves their vision of their music as as it should be so that's that's a big part of it so i've sort of made that easy for myself because i get people that love working with each other and it's just a fun time God, that's that that is just tremendous. So what's on your your windshield here in at the end of March 2023? What are the things that you're that that you're particularly interested or curious about that are that are that are burbling up? Um well I have to keep coming up with new podcast topics. And you know, when I started it, I had a very relatively narrow focus because I just wanted to educate people. You know, I mean, I thought 
I was speaking mostly to beginners, but I find that I have a lot of, you know, well-respected people in in the music business that listen to my podcast. I'm always amazed that people tell me that they listen to it and get so much from it. You know, so that, that so I'm trying to broaden it a little bit to, uh, you know, it's it's always been an educational uh, target as 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 the primary thing. I I want to educate people, share what I know. You know, a lot of it's very subjective, and people aren't going to agree on everything that I say. And I make it a point to say, you know, don't do it the way I do it, do it the way you do it, you know, but if I can help you with some ideas, things that I've learned in the past 60 years, then why not? And uh, so that, that, that's pretty much my, um, my goal as far as the podcast is concerned. And, and continuing, of course, with Coraline Green and the other people that you, that, that you find, that you find that you're, that you're doing. Also, your work with Lyme disease, continuing to work with that and continue the educational and the educational realm of that. Yeah, it's true. I mean, my goal in the Lyme disease education is to work myself out of a job, you know, and, and hopefully the medical community will come up with some better solutions than what they have now, which is really disturbingly inadequate. And, uh, you know, I, it's not something I, it, I don't enjoy doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm gratified when I make a connection with an audience or even an individual and explain things to them in a way that they understand and it gives them some insight. You know, that, that's enjoyable. It's, it's good to see that, that you might make a difference with people. Um, and I've learned a whole lot about it that I never would have learned otherwise, you know, in, in med medicine in general. But, um, you know, if somebody said, okay, you don't have to do that anymore, I would not be disappointed. But but I won't stop, you know. I I feel an obligation to, to share what I know if I can help people. Because I get people all the time telling me that um, – particularly the booklet that I wrote on Lyme disease, people tell me it saved their life. I mean, that, that's what they say. Your booklet saved my life. And that's that's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that that's very gratifying, and I'm really glad that I was able to do that for them. And, I mean, I don't think I literally saved their life, but I think I gave them information that allowed them to save their life. And... Uh, that's kind of hard to walk away from because I can imagine. Yeah. So I, I don't intend to, I'll keep doing it. And in your time, you're, you're in, uh, in Pennsylvania, right near Philadelphia, right? I mean, the, mm -hmm. and, and are, do you have the pace of life that you're, that, that you're looking at, you know, your, your mornings, your walks, your opportunities with your wife and your dog and, and to be able to do this is the, are you seeing a time here at, at 75? Do you, do you, do you look at this like, like back when you were like 25, when you looked at 75 or you would look at, or 50 and looking at 75, does, does this time in our lives, in our elderhood, does that, are there things that that are that are coming to you? Uh, thoughts, or you know, your own, the capriciousness of our own mortalities, of how why we are still around when people like Dave Hill, younger than we are, uh, are uh, are not. And do you think about that? Does that? Um, yeah, but it's not. <clears throat> excuse me, it's not so much internally; it's the external forces that caused me to consider that you know as you know i think I, I don't know if i mentioned it before to you but i'm a pilot mm -hmm. and own my own airplane which you know i use for business and and for just for pleasure or for family travel or whatever and my aviation insurance broker tells me has told me for the last few years that 
none of the aviation insurers will insure any pilot over age 79. And so that's kind of disturbing because I feel like I'm still a safe and certainly experienced pilot, you know, never had any, any, any kind of issue with an airplane. And, um, the fact that they're telling me I'm too old to do that, you know, reminds me. Uh, I in my wallet I have a pass that allows me to ride on the entire Philadelphia um, rail and transit system for free because I'm over sixty-five. You know, also my wallet is a card that gets me into any national park in the country for free. <laughs> So, I mean, those are great perks. I appreciate that. But it reminds me that, you know, I'm in this uh, upper echelon of age groups, you know, and that's kind of disturbing. But uh, I, I don't know when I developed the philosophy, when, it, when I actually put it into words. But, you know, my philosophy is to live my life like I'm going to live forever. You know, until something tells me that I can't, I'm I'm not going to change. Yeah. I have a lot of stamina. You know, I, I can work longer than a lot of the younger people I work with. They're exhausted and I'm still going. So I'm really grateful for that. You know, I think it's some some decent genes and some good life decisions I started early in my life that have... Uh, allow me to reach this age and 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 be in good health. Well, it, it's lovely to see Doug and especially your opportunity to to teach and to and to and to talk with us. I love your podcast. Uh, my take on music recording is just uh, been something that I that I listen to episode after episode after episode. And I see why others uh, get it, because while I don't come to music from a technical point of view, I always feel like you're, you're neither talking over me, but you're talking from your experience and you're talking uh, as, as great explainers do, helping me to see what the perspective is and talking to me. I feel very, it's a very personalized experience to be able to enjoy uh, your podcast and I can see why it's gotten, gotten so much acclaim around and I'm very glad that you were willing to do that and will continue to do that. Yeah, well, it was something I started in 2020 when we were all locked down for the pandemic, and I, I didn't really know where it was going, and and I was afraid I would run out of topics. But um, I'm going to include more stuff that sort of expands my uh, my topic list a little bit, so that it's not just focused just for the working recording person, but for uh, people on the periphery of that and even people that are just listeners that are curious about how it works. Exactly. And because, because that's what, that's what I see that you're, that when you do this, you're talking about the creative process that can translate to any, any other process, because it's very, you're, 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 you're very systematic and you're curious and you're uh, willing to look at that. And how am I going to overcome that? And what am I going to do? And, and that's the same process that we get for, for any kind of a, any kind of a, a growth that we're going to be using. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think that orientation for me makes it much easier for me to deal with other creative people because there's a lot of people in the recording world that just don't have that and there's that that results in some conflict or at least less than optimum results so i i feel really fortunate all right doug well thank you i wanted to have this uh, continuing conversation with you and what i would like to do is is as you expand your podcast and you expand to going into other subjects i would like to be able to to bounce off of those and go tangential to the important things that you're learning and learning about yourself as you continue to uh to engage us in your storytelling Oh, thank you, Dennis, and um, thanks for again for having me on. I, I always enjoy talking to you. 
Oh, me too, Doug. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. And and my take on use, music recording will be on the, in the link. Please go over there. Please enjoy. You will be so happy you did. Thank you, Doug. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Dennis. This episode of Reasonably Spontaneous Conversations has been brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemail.com.